The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for the righteousness. For they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful. For they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart. For they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they will be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they endure you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be praised in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. I love to become a saint. How many of us here love to become a saint? Just raise your hand so I know. You don't dare to become a saint? You're afraid to become a saint? Or you never thought that you could become a saint or what? You know, in my imagination, I'm wondering what's going on, what's going on in heaven? What's going on with the saints after they be canonized, you know? Can I become a saint too? And I think to become a saint is fun. It's very fun. I, I believe that to become just, you know, like to go to become a priest, to seminary to become a priest, it's good, but I don't think it's fun until I made my mind and I said that I want to go to seminary to become a saint. It gives you a lot more opportunities and a lot more revenues to be creative and to enjoy life. In fact, my redemptorist founder, St. Alphonse is right there, the one with the my and with the crane, whatever you call that staff, He's challenged all the redemptors. He said, if you want to become a redemptorist, you must strive to become a saint. If you don't want to become a saint, then you can leave. That's why we have a lot of saints in our congregation. But in our joke, inside joke, in order to have one saint, you need to have seven saint makers around you. So, Today, my brothers and sisters, we are celebrating saints. And for me, I have so many saints that I can imitate. And I have a lot of different saints to give me some different paths and different ways of living our lives. But I believe that each one of us, when we come to this church, either on Sunday or on weekday, our longing 
our goal is to become a saint. Yes or no? Yes? It's like when you go to the gym, every time you go to the gym, you want to come out of the gym with good looking, right? Feel good, look good, and you're proud of yourself. Same thing when we go to church. That's our goal. Our goal is to become healthy, happy, and holy. Our goal is to long to see God's face. I hope that in each one of us conscience, my dream that when we say that I want to see your face, Lord, we have some kind of an image of that. We have some kind of the goal that we're going to set for ourselves. If not, we don't know what we're doing here. I hope that when we come here, we long to see God's goodness. Yesterday, somehow, I think God gave me that glimpse of heaven on earth, glimpse of what is a saint. I watched that small video performed by a whole family, seven siblings, young, from 11 years old up to 24 years old from England. They performed the song called Redemption Song. I don't know how many of us here listen to that Redemption Song written by Bob Marley. He passed away, unfortunately, already of cancer. But that song talking about freedom, freedom from slavery, freedom from bondage, freedom from yourself, weaknesses, and to praise Lord. But when I watched that video, I saw that man who playing the cello, his face expression was so deep and so emotional to the point I said, what's going on in his mind, in his memories, in his body? Because his, his, his eyes filled with tears. I think tears of joy, tears of compassion, tears of memory, tears of humanity. And so I came up with the definition of who are the saints? The saints are the artists. And the artist, you can imagine that could be a mother, it could be a painter, it could be a, a cellist, it could be a priest, it could be a teacher, it could be a cleaner, it could be anybody, a singer, a musician. But those artists express the beauty of God, the redemption of God, and the love of God with care, with respect, and with love. This man, a young man, 21 years old, he playing the cello. Every note that he playing with care, with love, and with respect from the author, from the writer. But he arranged that marriage, the, the music, to the point that he could feel it. And not just that, the person who view, who see, who hear his music could connect with divine and with humanity. And for me, my brothers and sisters, if we live our life carefully, if we live our life with love and respect, we are the saints. Maybe we say, I can't do that, Father Ted. I can't. You know, when I hear Father Paul, he tries so hard. He prepared his reading. I don't know how many times he practiced to make sure he reads correctly so that you could hear the Word of God today. Just think about it. Father Paul, or myself, when I read, when I pray, when I do anything here, I do it with care, with love, with respect. I believe Father Paul is like a saint for us here. Yesterday, I told people that Randy, my Sackerson, an altar boy, he did everything with care, with love, and respect. Kenny, our longtime Sackerson here, he is my saint because he he's called himself a complete Sackerson. He taking care of open the door, close the door, right? That's easy job. But he want to make sure 
all the trash bins, the trash can there empty after the mass. He want to make sure the candle will be filled with oil. He wiped every single thing around here. He arranged everything. The book marked. Everything is set up for us so that when we come to celebrate Mass, everything is ready. Now, maybe we didn't see it, but God sees everything. I imagine that if you are a mother or a father, you get up so early in the morning that nobody even knows. Your children didn't even know how much you have to pay for them for school, and then after that, for college, and after that, take care of their children. You are blessed. All the beatitude that you and I heard today, maybe it's not for the future, it's for now. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. The kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are those who mourn because you will be comforted. Blessed are you who are the peacemaker. Blessed are you who hunger and thirst for righteousness. I'm thinking about my own children behind me, which is yours as well. They hunger for, and thirst for righteousness, for good education, for good moral value. And I believe they are fed right now. They are nervous right now because of so many benefactors, good-hearted like you. I believe that these children, they grow up with a sense of pride, a sense of peace, a sense of community, a sense of holiness, the sense of happiness, a sense of healthiness. And I want to prove with you, I have one graduate right there. Can you just raise your hand? He's right there. He just graduated from eighth grade last year. He come back here with his, his dad. And he looks so good. And I could see his future with so much in front of him and around him right now. And that's what we're talking about today, my brothers and sisters. If you try to find God's face in heaven, maybe you couldn't. Go and find God's faces right around us, right next to us right now, from your mom, from your child, from your neighbors. And draw that face. Long to see that face because that's the point of a saint. The saint is the one who longs to see God's face, long to see God's mercy, forgiveness, love, and more. And we have so many people already did that. They devoted themselves to make this world a better world, to make this school a better school, this community a better community, the family. Maybe God would say, blessed are you. Blessed are you who did so much. And I don't know, I can bring this up. Bill right here, buddy. Yesterday, his last day of his whole career working in tirelessly for a long time. Many of us here retired from our job. I encourage you, when you retire, throw a big, not just one party, many parties to celebrate your dedication, your hard work with your friends, with your family because you did it. And blessed are you who did it so well. And so today, my brothers and sisters, we celebrate the saints, not just in heaven, not just pass away already before us, but the one who are living right now. I don't want to mention your, your names, but I know each one of you had a difficult life. Like my friends there, Vietnamese family, with two autistic kids. That is a burden. But believe that Jesus today talked right next to you. Blessed are you who care for those children of yours. Heaven and sainthood, nothing else but blessed upon blessed upon blessed. And I wish that God continued to bless you, not just today, but forever. Amen.
Please.